Hey, what's up guys? The Bookster again. Welcome to Empire Total War. Today we're trying out the mod, the Regiments of the American Revolution. I'm super excited to be bringing you the Battle of Camden today. It was suggested to me by the mod developer. He helped me with some of the unit layout and how I would position them in order to recreate the battle as historically accurately as possible. Um... We will see how that goes. I was pretty pleased with the results. This is a replay, so I won't be doing any commanding. We will only be looking at the units, enjoying the battle, and uh, sort of, you know, sucking in that historical accuracy. I'm quite excited. The Battle of Camden was actually featured in the movie The Patriot. Um, I believe it was one of those battles they wanted to showcase to truly bring out the brutality and uh, efficiency of the British Redcoats during the American Revolution. Uh, it took a while, obviously, until they understood that we cannot face them toe-to-toe um, -to -toe in lines. We are too ill-trained. Uh, the British have too much experience. And um, it really shows in that sequence. And hopefully we've recreated that very same effect today. So I'm going to go through some of the unit deployments and the units that we're using today. Then I'm going to go through the Battle of Camden just briefly, briefly, and then we're going to enjoy the battle. And for those of you who have seen the movie pa Patriot, The Patriot, sorry, uh, with Mel Gibson, uh, you will hopefully also be able to sort of uh, get some enjoyment out of this as well. Um, there is going to be a link to the Patreon site of this developer and this mod, rather. Um, backers will have the chance of uh, adding their own regiments into the mod in the future. Uh, obviously not their own regiments, but regiments that they like and of their choosing. If you have a favorite regiment from the era that was active in the American Revolution, then that will be a possibility. Uh, there's also going to be more updates in the future, and I'm going to be covering those as new units and features appear in this mod. So without further ado, while we're paused, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and play, and we'll go through the left to right. So on the left side, um, we've got um, the 2nd Battalion in reserve of the 71st Foot, the uh, Highlanders, Fraser's Highlanders. We'll see them back here. Looking very good. We've got General Cornwallis behind them. And in the front, since we are currently lacking some of the historical units that were placed uh, under Lord Rawdon's front, left, we've got uh, another battalion of 70... First Regiment Fraser's Highlanders to take up the left um, to possibly replace the historically uh, deployed uh, Irish volunteers. Um, on the right side, we've got uh, the Loyalist Infantry Companies um, that I presume uh, would also represent some of the volunteers and Loyalists deployed under Lord Rawdon on the left flank. Uh, we've got the artillery in the center, some six-pounders, royal artillery. Behind that, we've got Tarleton's Legion in the form of Tarleton's Light Dragoons. Very interesting indeed. I just realized here that the uh, 33rd Regimental Grenadier Company of one of the battalions had been deployed on the wrong side of the center company, so I decided to quickly maneuver them around and place them on the right side of the center battalion companies as they should be. So here we've got the 33rd, moving up, looking stunning. Love the, uh, the white buffs and all that. Forming up the center to the right of them, there will be a gap that the uh, regiment, or the grenadier company will fill. Uh, we've got the 23rd Regiment. That was uh, historically also on the right of the 33rd. And now, uh, since we're on the right side of the uh, artillery in the center, uh, we are now on Webster's flank. Uh, Webster had the 23rd and 33rd under him. Um, so here we got two of the middle companies from the 23rd, also known as center companies. And on their right, we've got the 23rd Royal Watch uh, Grenadier Company. The 23rd is more, I presume, known for their bearskin hats, at least in many pictures and uh, visually, vis visualizations of this regiment. Um, they've been mainly shown in the bearskin hats, looking very fantastic there. And to the right of them, we've got some light infantry companies from the 33rd, because realistically on the far right, on Webster's flank, there were four light infantry companies. We have uh, represented that with two moving up, so that is very good. And on the 
uh, continental side, so to say, the United States Army here, the Continental Army, commanded by Gates, who uh, was a foolish enough to go up against the Redcoats in toe-to-toe -to -toe like this, with uh, the majority of the army being militia, uh, ill-trained, poorly equipped, uh, just simply not a good idea for Gates to think that he could fight the Redcoats. The Gates had previously spent time as a general in the British Army. Most of the, I presume, higher-ranking officers of the Continental Army had previously been in the British Army, of course. Um, so they are indeed moving up now. We're going to be focusing the majority of our time on the right flank, because that's where more of the awesome things happen. But right now, we are waiting for the troops to close up. We've got our own light infantry companies engaging the uh, left flank of the... Our right flank, rather, of the uh, Continental Army. Our center companies and grenadiers are ready. And the volleys begin. Here come Tarleton's Dragoons charging into the already broken lines of militia and continental units with the follow-up of the 33rd through the center there, charging what stands, and the rest withdraws. Shattered the uh, continental army and its militia. Stunning. Absolutely amazing. So the majority of militia troops actually broke and ran before the British troops actually reached their lines. Um, the uh, British knew that they would have full superiority in melee and with their bayonets fixed. So um, the they did not quite get to get that far into the enemy until they actually withdrew. And here on the left flank with Lord Rawdon, the... Uh, Units have also been routed under the pressure from the 71st and the other Loyalist regiments here. I believe there were the Hamilton's, Hamilton's Regiment, uh, Loyalist Legion Infantry and the Irish Volunteers. Um, supported from the rear there were the 71st. So all those Volunteers and Loyalist Regiments will be uh, represented here by the Loyalist Infantry Company. Looking very good indeed. I love the hats. Now that that's been broken down, we're going to continue in. Did, did you know that the uh, Tarleton's Dragoons actually changed, uh, charged and chased the retreating uh, US soldiers and militia there for 20 miles, uh, cutting them down? It was absolutely gruesome. They had no chance, as uh, Mel Gibson said in the, uh, the movie The Patriot, for Gates to go toe to toe against the. British Redcoats is suicide. Absolute suicide. So here we've got some more of the 23rd. We've got the Grenadier Company of the 33rd and a Middle Company, Centre Company of the 23rd, Royal Welsh Fusiliers, moving up on some rem remaining Continental Militia on the right side. Most of the Grenadiers have to reload, but this center company is fresh and ready to go. Present! Oh! Absolutely stunning. Charlton's Dragoons coming in around the flank and breaking the remnants. I believe, as historically accurate as it can get, in a custom battle against the AI using Empire Total War. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Realistically, the British lost 300 men. We're close to that with 232. 100 out of those 300 historical uh, casualties were um, from the 33rd, who was, I guess, in most of the fighting here towards the center right. Um, obviously, since they also got themselves into a bayonet charge, 
uh, with whatever stood on the right flank. Most of that retreated, as I said, before they actually got there. Uh, left The left flank under De Kalb, which was a German commander uh, serving in America, he actually died that day. Uh, Gates fled together with the militia that retreated. He stood together with his Maryland and Delaware regiments a little further, and uh, the left flank, actually, uh, of the... Uh, the uh, Continental Army held better than the right one. The right one kind of just uh, f gave way instantly under the 33rd and 23rd, so that was quite cool. The Americans lost about a 1,000, which we have accurately recreated today. Another 1,000 were captured, and they lost all their guns and stockpiles and stuff like that. Um, let's look here what got the most kills. Well, obviously, the Tarleton's Light Dragoons got most, but luckily the 33rd, two battalion center companies, did get a lot of kills here as well. On the lost side... Um, the 33rd is not representing the most losses, but uh, it's, it can, can be hard to tell the game uh, exactly how to act. But that was very cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this mod. If you guys want to see more, let me know. We can make more and bigger battles of this, uh, involve more players and do multiplayer and recreate more battles. But this was a small little battle of Camden with a realistic outcome and a, hopefully a pretty, pretty realistic battle sequence too there with uh, most of the U.S. Army just falling and retreating back under the pressure of the Redcoats. Uh, they obviously learned that uh, the militia fighting and guerrilla fighting is what they will have to, to resort to before their continental army is strong enough to go up against toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Redcoats. So this was August 16, 1780. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys soon again. Bye.